Could you tell us how, how the report is made up? How, what's the methodology behind the report? It's a bit complex. It includes a lot of information about each players, uh, including the likes of uh, you know the, the 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 team, the team where the, the, the player is, the the history of transfers is not the same. Uh, uh, a team in the same player in one team has nothing to do with with uh, with with the same player in another team in terms of the capacity to to sell or the the, the size of the the size of the team some demographics also and, and and one of the key factors especially when we're talking about young talent is the percentage of minutes played so at the end of the day we're talking young players and what what makes them really valuable is their experience on field and uh, this was one of the factors that has been taken more into into account because we're talking about very young players uh, participating at a really senior level Okay, obviously you know the report from back to front. What trends does the report tell us about the value of young players in Europe? Obviously, I mean, this is the first time we, we, we do the report, but what we've been seeing is that more and more young players, uh, we see more and more uh, transfer of young players with high, high values. This has to do uh, with different factors, uh, including the fact that more and more the teams uh, tend to kind of promote more their homegrown talent, sometimes just because of, just because it's a philo philosophy, sometimes it's just because it's a necessity, but at the end of the day we, we, we found out a, a large number of players having played more than half of the minutes uh, of, of their team, which, which is remarkable and as a result, especially if we're talking about players that are uh, in top teams, it ends up uh, showing up really, really high values. Uh, the report seems to show that young defenders are becoming increasingly valuable. Why do you think that's the case? I would say defenders in general are quite valuable. It's not easy to, 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 to find a good centre-back. So uh, those defenders that made it to the top 20 that we're talking about uh, are definitely really, really uh, highly valuable uh, players because uh, they are playing regularly at the highest level. Plus, they are very young. So, uh, if on top of it uh, we talk, we, we we take the likes of you know John Stones playing the Premier League and having a you know a British passport that makes it even easier uh, for for his value to go up. You mentioned John Stones in the Premier League. They have the most expensive talent. Why is why is the most expensive talent based in the Premier League? I would say that that that's because uh, I mean. I would say it's regulation at the end of the day. The domestic market, uh, of especially of English players, uh, is showing more and more of an inflation. The fact that Sterling is number one, there is an important factor uh, uh, into his calculation in the sense that uh, he's a uh, under-20 player already playing regularly for, uh, for his team at Liverpool, but also playing regularly in the in the national team, the A team, right? So uh, that has to do with the fact also that there's a regulation in, 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 in England, in England, which 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 makes the teams have at least eight homegrown players, meaning players that have been in the system, in the academy system of the team for, for at least three years when they, while they were under 21. So that means that some players, oh, sorry, some teams are short of, uh, of uh, English players and, and, and those available in the market or, or those that their teams are prepared to sell uh, are more expensive and there's uh, an important inflation on them. German football has been very successful at club and international level in recent years. Are you surprised that the Bundesliga, Bundesliga has the least valuable players out of the big five countries? It's not really a surprise and, and again, I mean, it may not be that there are players in the top 20, but there's plenty of them. We're talking, uh, we've analysed uh, thousands of players to come up with a report. Uh, but it's true that there's not so many uh, German players that has been that have been successful abroad. So probably this time is a coincidence. I guess that once we keep on doing the report in the future, we'll see that this is something that gets consolidated or is just one short time. In terms of numbers, it would appear not so many players are coming out of countries such as Holland, Portugal, and Italy as before. Why is that? Do you think? 
I mean, we're talking, uh, you, 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 you were mentioning countries that normally produce uh, lots of good players that are sent abroad and uh, sent abroad and uh, there are many of uh, many players uh, from these nationalities down in the report, we're just selecting the, 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 the top 20, but more importantly, uh, again, as I was mentioning before, uh, the percentage of minutes played is one, one of the key factors considered in the report and this time we happen to have a, a large number of top players uh, that have played a lot at senior level and it happened to be that they were not from from these places but still we have we have the pie number two sorry number three in the report and, and and plenty of other players around for you what was the most interesting information that came out of this report I would say uh, the confirmation of the of the inflation that's coming that, that is arising from the rules in the in the UK not just because of the UEFA regulations but also as I as I was mentioning before the the fact that you need to have at least eight homegrown players in your squad out of uh, 25 squad that makes uh, them extremely valuable and probably then the the, the the high the high amount of defenders that we have in the report nine out of twenty is quite is quite a lot. What do you think the trend will be for the next five years in terms of, of the report and the value of young players? I think we will continue uh, in in this direction. More and more, uh, we'll find uh, young players highly expensive. Uh, and uh, for instance, in the top 20, we have a, a Belgian player that is only uh, 18 years old, and this will continue to happen. Again, just because of the fact that the, the teams are uh, either because of strategy or because of necessity are prepared to, to, to give more minutes to, 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 the young, the, to the young talent. As long as that continues to happen, this, this type of players will end up becoming sort of currency, and, and the, the more opportunities they have to play, the, the more transfers there will be, will be about them and, and, and as a result the more, the, more, the more value. Before we talk about some of those players individually, what's next for Soccer X and Prime Time Sport? Well, obviously, this is an exciting collaboration. Uh, we've been working together, not just in this report, but also on the Soccer, Soccer X Transfer Review that, uh, that we're presenting together for the last couple of years. And, and, and it's exciting to, 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 to be ready to, to, pre to present our report out of the summer transfer window. That's going to happen uh, in September in the Global Com Convention. Hopefully, there will be plenty of news uh, to share. Last year, we reported record high figures in terms of transfers uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Premier League uh, over, uh, surpassing 1 billion in, in transfers and, and it looks like it may still be the case that this season is, is strong. Let's keep in mind that there are uh, leagues in which we expect significant revenue growth. We've, we've got the new TV rights coming soon in, in England which is going to be more money available for, for English teams, but also we have the same situation in Spain. So there is a situation in which uh, before most of the deals would be concentrated by, by, by Barcelona and Real Madrid, but now with the new TV rights uh, system in, play, in place in Spain, which is centralized, in average all the teams will have between 10 and 15 million more revenues on TV rights. Even if it would be as of next year, it's, it's under discussion at the moment, but it's more available money and, and, and as a result we, we should expect a very busy transfer, transfer window. One of the players who might be busy in the transfer window this summer is your number one player and it's Raheem Sterling at Liverpool. What do you think about him and what do you think is going to happen with his future this summer? Well, I, I guess we should ask himself and his current team, uh, Liverpool. Uh, obviously, as we were mentioning before, he kind of has it all to, to, to have a high valuation, extremely young player, playing in a forward position, playing in a top team, uh, being a regular in the national team, having you know, a, a good personality which makes him, makes him uh, appealing for brands in terms of, of, of media value. So uh, all in all, and of course having a, a, a British passport makes him uh, extremely valuable. It's, it's, uh, with the numbers that we're talking about, the only thing we can say is that of course not any team can afford him and we'll see what happens during the summer. Do you think it'll be a target for clubs in England and possibly abroad as well, maybe Spain? 
I would say so. Uh, as far as I know, uh, he's not. He's not. Uh, he has not agreed new terms with Liverpool, despite the club publicly said they offered him a new contract. I don't know exactly what's happening, but everything uh, looks like there will be a move this summer. So it will be interesting to see where he goes. In terms of Spain, it would be. I mean, it would be probably one of the first time in which there is a, a transfer of this calibre. Of course, we had Gareth Bale that went to, to Real Madrid, but traditionally there's not so many English players that have been successful in, in Spain. So let's see, I, I would guess uh, his market is definitely in the UK, again because of, this, the, of the fact that he adds up uh, uh, one more uh, British player or English player into the team, which is not just a necessity in terms of the quality he brings into the team, but also in terms of the of the passport that he brings along. Passport is obviously key. You mentioned, mentioned Memphis Depay, who's already gone to Manchester United. Um, there's a few other players in the Premier League, the Everton and Arsenal, for example. Who else on the list can, can we expect to make a big move this summer, do you think? <laughs> That's a, that's a question to ask the players and, uh, and, and the teams. I would say those players that are, that are in the list and are not yet in, the, in, the, in a top team. So, so you know, Tielemans from, from, from Anderlecht, Taliska from, from Benfica. There's, there's some players, uh, the, we have a player, um, Kalanoglu, which is at Bayer Leverkusen also. All these players that have all the all the components to make them extremely valuable and, and, and I would say that are targets or can be targets at any time. Martial who's playing for Monaco, he's been in the news that the Spurs would be in, could, could be interested on him. So we're talking very young players and those of them having a European passport uh, would be targets of, of, of any of the top teams at any time. Fantastic.